The thing with this show is that it just defies description, but I'm gonna do my best. Oh my god, hey, welcome back to my theatre-themed YouTube channel. My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I am a professional theatre critic from the UK, currently visiting New York, where I am seeing around 20 Broadway, Off-Broadway, and American regional shows, which I plan to review here on my YouTube channel. And today we are talking about one of Broadway's most recent openings, Gutenberg the Musical, which is currently playing at the James L. Jones Theatre, on Broadway and stars Andrew Rannells and Josh Gad. A casting combination which is also a reunion between these two real-life friends who starred together on Broadway in The Book of Mormon over a decade ago. Fittingly, they also play best friends in the show, but even though this is not strictly speaking a new musical, it first premiered in 2006 and has just taken a long time to get to Broadway, audiences don't necessarily know all that much about Gutenberg going in. So today, I'm going to be answering the question that may or may not be on your lips. What the hell is this show about? Is it worth seeing? And did I enjoy it? All of that to come in today's review video. If you enjoy this one, make sure to subscribe to my theatre-themed YouTube channel for plenty more reviews of various shows in New York, in London, and all around the world. And if you've already seen Gutenberg on Broadway, or indeed if you ever saw a previous production, it's been done off-Broadway in London and a, a couple of other places around the world, it's been done in Paris and Madrid, I believe, make sure to comment down below with what you thought of the show. And stay tuned for my full review of the show right after this clip of The Curtain Call. So this is a show that defies description, but I'm going to do my best to explain it to you. This is about two characters named Bud and Doug, who have turned their attention towards writing musicals. I don't want to call them musical theatre writers because that suggests a certain amount of professionalism that is not really prevalent within this plot. The conceit of the whole thing is that we have this instantly shattered fourth wall, and this audience at the James L. Jones Theatre is seeing a showcase that these two have paid for. They have hired a theatre on Broadway for one night using inherited money from one of their relatives who was recently in a skydiving accident, all for the purposes of trying to get producers interested in their new musical called Gutenberg. And so this two-act musical that you are seeing is these two playing roles pitching this show. They perform this show within the show that is Gutenberg the Musical on Broadway, they play all of the parts, and they distinguish between all of the different characters they're playing by wearing these hats that have names, or sometimes things, written across the top. So in this outer layer, they are Bud and Doug, who works together in a retirement facility, in like an assisted living center, where they used to perform lip sync performances to cheer up the elderly residents. But after a sort of serendipitous and mysterious moment where uh, Josh Gad's character ended up inventing a song to try and appease one of the more elderly residents, they decided that they should write musicals together. Their first having been unsuccessful, this is a musical they've written about Gutenberg, the inventor of the printing press. So then that is this show within a show, but they acknowledge before they begin performing this in a very heavy disclaimer that they went on Google to find out as much as they could about Gutenberg, about his life and about his story, and they weren't able to find out all that much. So the show that they have written is described, I believe, as historical fiction. That is to say they've made up this hilarious and ridiculous plot all about the circumstances surrounding him inventing the printing press. To give you a very brief flavour, it begins with a character who is burying their dead baby because they didn't give it the right medicine because they couldn't read. That being the situation that inspires Gutenberg to create the printing press because the people need to be able to read. And there is a deliberately large number of zany characters. You see this table on stage with all of these different hats and they're going to play all these different roles. They share roles, they sort of each play each other's characters as well. There is a potential love interest called Helvetica, which I think is hilarious to have her 
literally be named after a font. There is an antagonist called Monk. There is a random anti-Semitic girl who is used to sort of poke fun at the concept of anti-Semitism because they hysterically acknowledge that all musicals have to also have a sort of important social vendetta and theirs is anti-Semitism, ostensibly because the show is set in historical Europe, but also because that is an issue that prevails. And it's a tongue-in-cheek acknowledgement, but they're also not wrong. And as plucky and optimistic and earnest as they are as these writer characters Bud and Doug, the show itself that they have written seems not to be all that great. From what I can tell from researching it, canonically, they're not meant to be all that talented. It's not meant to be a good musical that they have written, and that's meant to be a source of comedy, that they're pitching this thing and they have really big dreams, but it's not a fantastic musical they've written. However, I'm going to talk about why that's evolved with this production, and it now feels a little bit different to how I imagine it may have felt in the original from reading about it. Just before I start telling you what I thought of the show, however, let me tell you a little bit more about what you can actually expect in this production. So we have a set within the stage of the James Earl Jones Theatre that has a fake proscenium that resembles the actual proscenium. It looks a little bit like the set on Saturday Night Live when the host is doing an introduction. We have this back wall. It's meant to look like they've just hired a Broadway stage and they don't have all of that much stuff. There is a band to one side that within the show is referred to as being a local wedding band that they hired. I believe from New Jersey, I think the idea is they're all from New Jersey. But save from a couple of set and lighting surprises, the whole thing largely just takes place on this one static set that is built to look like there is no set. And as far as costuming goes, it's the hats. So hopefully that gives you the slightest sense of what this is about and what this is like as a show. Let me now tell you what I thought of the thing. So before I forget to mention this, I do want to explain a kind of a revelation I think I've had about this show, and I could be completely mistaken here, but from reading up on the original production, because this started in 2006, right, and it's only now coming to Broadway, I don't know whether it's going to be officially considered a new musical because this is its Broadway premiere, or a revival based on the classics rule, kind of like Hedvig was when that finally made it to Broadway years after debuting, but from reading about the show's original synopsis, it's not meant to be good material, and back in 2006, I think that probably got more comedy from the whole thing being ridiculous. But now, on Broadway in the year 2023, the show within a show that they have written and these characters and how wacky and stupid and wonderfully buffoonish it is, feels not dissimilar from a lot of stuff that is actually on Broadway. I think that played as more of a joke in 2006 because it was ludicrous that they would be writing what they thought was a Broadway show, but now, tonally, it's not dissimilar from something like Beetlejuice, for which the writers of this show also wrote the book, fun fact, or literally any of the Star Kids shows. We now have a whole host of theatre productions that are increasingly successful and have these books and these comedic tones that are wonderfully stupid. In the nearly two decades since this show first premiered, I feel like the sense of humour of audiences has pivoted a little bit and made shows like this possible. So it's funny because it's funny and it's now not necessarily funny because it's ludicrous. And it basically just feels less far-fetched that the musical within Gutenberg could actually be on Broadway, which I think is hilarious to think about. Now, the book, music, and lyrics of this show have been written by collaborators Scott Brown and Anthony King. They wrote the book for Beetlejuice, but not the score. And it stands to reason that the book of this show is absolutely its strongest element. The songs work really functionally because they are believably these kind of like slightly subpar and silly songs that have been written by these goofy and quirky oddball writers within the show. But were it not for the fact that they get the audience to do a call and response sing along at the end, I would not be able to recall literally any of the songs from the show. And I'm not saying that a song being memorable after you hear it for the first time is the most important thing, but they really don't emerge. Even as you're hearing these songs, they don't make much of an individual impression. It's the lyrics and the context that make them funny, but they're not particularly strong songs. It's not a very strong score. It's functional within the show. The book is what is really great. This script is really funny, and all of the material is elevated hugely by these performances, Andrew Rannells and Josh Gad. I think were it not for the fact that they were in this show, A, it wouldn't be on Broadway in the first place, B, it wouldn't be selling, and C, it wouldn't be nearly as good. Because it's their charm and it's their ability to spin even the most mundane of lines into comedy that really makes this the laugh riot that it is. There are lots of laughs. You will keep on smiling this entire show because they play off of each other so well. They have this wonderful rapport. And oddly enough, if I didn't already know that this show was nearly 20 years old, you could have told me that this was written for them as performers and I would have completely 
believed you because they both feel so well suited to each of the roles they are playing. In fact, it feels a little bit like they are playing versions of themselves, or at least of their public personas. Josh Gad is playing that lovable eagerness and charm. He is a straight guy. Andrew Rannells is playing a gay guy who is just slightly flamboyant and a little bit wry. They're both very familiar of the actors that we know them to be. And that's where I think this two or three star material gets elevated into a four star evening at the theater because they're both so wonderful in it. You get the joy of them playing these earnest, eager writers who are committing wholeheartedly to the presentation that they're performing and doing these comedy accents and playing these ridiculous scenes with each other. I also think the direction from Alex Timbers is just brilliant. There are so many great hat moments. I like that it evolves a little bit from what the show establishes itself as, where they're just putting on the different hats and then they find ways to sort of up their game with this and play on more and more hat reveals and comedy moments within that framework. Given that it's a static set, given that it's just these two on stage for the duration, you run the risk of this getting stale and it's down to Alex Timbers that that doesn't happen. He makes a lot of very smart choices in sort of developing and furthering the show's comedic scope as it goes on. And it just about warrants a second act. I'm still kind of in two minds about this because I enjoyed the second act and I enjoy all of the material Material, I don't know if it needs to be that long. I also think it's interesting that the laughs predominantly come from two places, which is the nonsense of the show that they are putting on and the charm and interactions between these two characters. And we don't really draw on musical theatre tropes for all that much comedy, but these are two people from outside of the musical theatre sphere who have seen Broadway shows and are trying to emulate that, I think we could bring a lot more comedy in from playing on those tropes. This is a Broadway audience. They're going to get the Broadway in-jokes that shows like Spamalot and Something Rotten have succeeded in the past by perpetrating. I'm surprised we don't have more tropes in there. There is this funny running gag where between them they explain to the audience certain theatrical conventions, but I think we could have even more in there. We could have reprises and we could have sort of other medleys and ensemble scenes the way that they try and recreate a larger ensemble of people with just the two of them is very funny in the way that they pivot between all of these different characters and their multi-rolling, that's also great. But I think that maybe comes back to these being really strong book writers who aren't as comfortable translating their comedic abilities to songwriting. Those are really very different disciplines and a musical comedy song is a difficult thing to write. While I'm praising elements of this production, I do also have to acknowledge Scott Pask's set design, some of the brilliance of which I absolutely cannot tell you about in this review without dishing out a heavy spoiler, but you will definitely leave the theater talking about it. In terms of a highlight moment of the show, there are some really funny things that happen and there are some really ingenious sequences, but the whole thing is just such a pretty consistent laugh. You're going to be enjoying yourself the entire time if you enjoy the first five minutes it just goes on with that same kind of exuberance there are a handful of really great lines about the theater that had me screaming with laughter in my seat one other thing i want to tell you about this show i've spoken a lot about the comedy and it is just so so funny and very light-hearted but there's this growing sense of warmth and that's often my favorite thing in some of these very light and deliberately silly shows is when you get a little bit of sentimentality to it and a sort of a creeping meaning because staging this show and trying to pitch this to potential Broadway investors means so much to these characters and the friendship between them is so strong and they both cherish it so much that it ends up in this really heartwarming place where they're consoling each other about the possibility that this may be a one night only performance of Gutenberg and it may never actually go anywhere, but their dreams are so big and they believe in them so passionately, whether or not that's misguided, that you cannot help but root for these two even though you've just seen the musical that they're trying to pitch. It's what makes it very possibly the most charming evening on Broadway. But I also want to give you a little bit of an insight as to how you might feel about about this show by telling you what kind of other things it bears a similarity to. So basically, who might enjoy this production? Now it goes without saying, if you are any kind of a fan of Josh Gad or Andrew Reynolds, they are so well showcased here, and it's so great to see them going back to their musical theatre roots. We've seen them both doing film and TV and being super successful. We know that they are hilarious, and it was great getting to see Andrew Reynolds uh, recently in Tammy Faye, the musical in the West End, giving this like layered and emotional and heartbreaking performance as a slightly more serious character. But getting to see them go full comedy here, years after their performances in the Book of Mormon, is so thrilling. They are so funny. They are so funny together. The way that Josh Gad can get a laugh just by repeating the same line 
line a couple of times just saying like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like he's so funny. And the way Andrew can acknowledge the audience and break without his face breaking is just fascinating to me. And he can have us all roaring with laughter knowing that the show has been interrupted the slightest bit by something happening as he's just doing this sort of like, stone-faced take to something, it's wonderful. And like I mentioned before, it's this comedic bond between the two of them that really makes the thing sing. So if you want to see these actors on stage, if you're a fan of them, this is the best time to go and see them performing. It is quintessential Andrew Rannells and Josh Gad, and it's a wonderful time. If you're wondering what other shows this is like, I mentioned Spamalot, I mentioned Something Rotten, it's that kind of level of comedy. Think Beetlejuice without those kind of bangers of songs. There's a silliness to it, there's a quirkiness to it, it's not unlike all of the Star Kid shows. In fact, the musical within a musical that they're writing could absolutely be a Star Kid show. But if you are at all fond of the lovably silly kind of a show, then you're really going to enjoy this one. And I defy anyone not to break into a smile at some point during this. But those have been my thoughts about Gutenberg, the musical currently on Broadway. Like I said, if you have already seen this production or if you've seen this show in a previous production, comment down below. Let us know what your thoughts were about Gutenberg. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you have enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my theater themed YouTube channel for many more reviews and other theater themed videos coming very soon. I still have so many Broadway shows to review here on my channel, then I'm going to be heading back to the West End and reviewing even more theatre over there, so make sure you're subscribed and you don't miss out. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>